What's the best part of a bad movie? The popcorn, of course. Join me today and I'll give you some great popcorn recipes as we celebrate National Popcorn Day here on SoFlo Taste. Hey, get your own. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Welcome to SoFlo Taste and our home kitchen here at J World in Coconut Creek. Are you a sweet or salty snacker? A crunchy or gooey snacker? A hot or cold snacker? Well, if you're a hot, crunchy, salty snacker, don't move. And if you're not, stay there anyway, because you never know what I'm up to. Today is National Popcorn Day, and popcorn is on my mind and on my menu, and it's the king of hot, crunchy, salty snacks. So let's get popping. So I'm gonna show you first and foremost how to make that perfect popped popcorn. I'm gonna show you how to pop popcorn in a regular pot. To make the perfect popcorn, and I'm talking perfect like almost every single kernel pops, you actually need a little more oil to kernels. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I'm not talking about a huge difference. We're talking a half a cup of oil to a third of a cup of popcorn. So as far as oils go, don't use olive oil, don't use anything fancy that has um, a low smoking point. You want something like a peanut oil, a corn oil, a sunflower oil. So I'm gonna start out by adding the oil and then I throw in just a couple kernels and wait until they pop to tell me when to add the rest. So you have your heat on about a medium high. I'd say at a one to 10, it would be about a seven. And once we see those starting to pop, we're gonna add the rest in, but we wanna create a little bit of steam but not completely covered because then it gets it wet. I know I'm going over a lot of principles here, but it's not that big of a deal. We're just trying to make that perfect pot of popcorn. All right, so my popcorn is popped, so I'm gonna add in the rest. I'm gonna cover it, but you see how I'm creating a little bit of a hole right there to allow a little bit of the steam to escape. It's not totally covered, it's almost completely covered, but you really want a little bit of that steam to escape. That way it causes it to be nice and dry, no wetness in there, no condensation in there. And once you can hear that most of your kernels are being popped, it should slow down to about a pop every six seconds. That's when you wanna lower the heat. Now, obviously it's a lot of oil, but because you've caused a little bit of the steam to escape and you've done this well with a lot of heat, you don't have greasy popcorn. You have the most perfect popcorn consistency. Wow. Yeah, I think I only have about four kernels on the bottom. So let me show you how this looks. So check this out. I didn't make a huge amount just now, but that is really beautifully popped popcorn. Let me go ahead and pour it into a bowl. So let's talk about flavoring popcorn. So I'm gonna show you my, probably my, I have two favorites. One is a fresh truffle popcorn, which I decided against doing today because I thought this one would be a little more interesting because less people make this. It's a duck fat popcorn. As crazy as it sounds, it's absolutely delicious. Duck fat is not always readily available, but there is one store down here that does have it. Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market has duck fat. Ask them for it. Uh, you're gonna melt a little bit of duck fat, as I did, and check this out. This is just some whole thyme with a little bit of whole garlic, cooked very, very slowly until the garlic gets really nice and soft. And this is all duck fat. We're only gonna use a little bit. You don't need much. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the garlic and the whole thyme. And then I'm gonna warm it up again and add a little bit of some very finely minced shallot as well as microplaning or the zest of one orange. So I bet this is something y'all have not tried at home yet. If you love the idea but don't love the duck fat, well, you can do all these flavors, of course, without the duck fat if you want to, but this duck fat just adds a very special flavor. All right, so we have all this infusion of great flavor 
into that pot with a duck. So we're not looking for any color. We're looking to soften those shallots just a little bit. So then this you can put in little by little as much as you really want to, as much as the flavor that you want to give it. God, it smells so good. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that shallot, orange, thyme, and duck flavor to my popcorn. Of course, finally a sprinkle of some kosher salt. Mix that up. And I would say we are on our way to a very fun time together with some really great popcorn. Come right back. I have salty and sweet. I have things you have never, ever thought of that you could possibly do with popcorn. I'll see you in a minute. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to National Popcorn Day, one of my favorite days of the year. So moving on, I always wanted to see about making something very different with popcorn, like a custard. I chose the panna cotta because it doesn't have eggs, because we have enough dairy going on. Uh, and the creaminess of it, and I wanted to get that flavor of buttered popcorn. So I'm popping some fresh popcorn for this, just like I showed you how to make. And once that popcorn is fully popped, I'm gonna go ahead and add milk. Now a lot of panna cotta recipes add a little bit of cream, maybe some half and half, and you can also make this, by the way, with any lactose-free milks like uh, an almond if you wanted to, or a rice, or even a soy. So once you achieve your full popcorn, which this is just popcorn, I'm gonna fill, or I should say cover, the popcorn with milk. I'm gonna just bring it up to, it's already pretty hot, I'm just gonna let it simmer for about a minute just to get flavor. Now, the longer you allow this to sit, the more of a popcorn flavor your custard is going to have. So if you wanted, you could actually simmer this, shut it off, throw it in your fridge, and leave it there overnight, and that will accrue the more popcorn flavor than ever. But if you don't have that kind of time, which let's face it, I never do, this is what I did. So I'm gonna go from here into a blender. So I decided, because I wanted a little more of a pretty color to it, I added a little pinch of turmeric, which by the way is really healthy and for inflammation. So uh, just a little bit, not enough that you can taste it. It's literally only for color. Then I added a little butter because I wanted it to taste like buttered popcorn. So a couple of tablespoons of butter are going in there. A little bit of sugar because I told you I wanted it to taste like kettle corn. So not too much just about a tablespoon, and then again a little bit of salt, but not too salty, because this is going to turn into a savory dish. And then I'm just going to pulse it in the blender, let it come together. I'm not looking for this to get completely pureed, but I am looking for it to break down, obviously more for flavor than anything. All right, once we've got that, you have two choices. We can just go for broke and just make it, or you can let this sit in your fridge and again, let accru accrue more flavor. So that's up to you. Once that's done, either way, we're gonna go ahead and strain it. And then you have this really pretty, deliciously smelling popcorn milk. And this is the fun part, because this stuff, you could pretty much do as you wish. You can make a flan, you can make a creme brulee, or like I'm gonna do right now, you can make a panna cotta. So, pretty easy conversions. For every cup of popcorn milk, you'll add one teaspoon of powdered gelatin. So let's see how much we got out of that. Perfect. 
Perfect. All right, I got two cups. Take a little bit of cold milk, just a little bit, and this is just for blooming the gelatin. It could be a tablespoon. So one tablespoon, let's say, of cold milk to two teaspoons, two teaspoons because it's one teaspoon of gelatin per cup, okay? So I'm gonna add that to some cold milk, and this is blooming. That's called blooming the gelatin. And that really causes the whole reaction in gelatin. It makes it kind of come alive. Once our gelatin comes alive and it becomes bloomed, which you can see it, it, it opens up. Go ahead and put it back into the hot liquid. And that liquid has to be really hot because it has to melt again. And stir it until it's completely smooth. You can put it back in a blender if you want to to make sure, or you could just keep stirring. And then that's basically it. You've done all your hard work. You're going to pour that mixture into some cups, and you can either serve it in a pretty cup, or you can do what I'm about to do. So I would serve about four to six ounces of a panna cotta, not much more than that. Place this into a fridge to set. You can even place it into ice water if you want it to go even faster. And check this out. So these are the set panna cotta that have been in the fridge. I left it overnight, but honestly, these were ready in about an hour. And they set right in there. So what we're going to do is use a paring knife to pull it out. And you can go as big or small as you want. This would make a really fun little hors d'oeuvre if you made them in little tiny solo cups. And they come right out just like so. So you're looking at a beautiful panna cotta with a great jiggle, but with the flavor of popcorn and this gorgeous look of corn. And then I thought it would be kind of cool to do a popcorn shrimp salad on top of it. So I've got a little bit of cut up poached shrimp, a little bit of diced fennel, and some fresh corn. Let's go ahead and add everything to the bowl. Shrimp and corn go beautifully together. If you like lobster more, that wouldn't be so bad either. Crab meat would be great too. Fennel is delicious. If you don't feel like cutting up some fennel, you can add a little celery instead. The shrimp does come from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Thank you guys, DelawareChicken.com. A little bit of olive oil. A tiny little bit of hot sauce. These all just kind of reminded me of flavors of the South with the popcorn and the corn. Um, a little hot sauce, a little lemon. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of some fresh chopped herb. I've got tarragon and thyme, which I'll just chop up and add. that to the salad and then just a little bit of salt and pepper and there we have it so mix your shrimp salad put that on top of your popcorn panna cotta it's only one thing we're missing can you guess what that is a little bit of popcorn because it is a popcorn panna cotta and there you have it. Come right back, I have the sweetest and most delicious snack coming up next. Calling all SoFlo bakers, WPLG and the Arch Center are looking for the most delicious, creative, and uniquely named pie inspired by the hit musical Waitress, playing at the Arch Center from February 26th through March 3rd. The winner will get Waitress opening night dinner and tickets for four and more. So log on to the local10.com's contest page to enter and for details. Good luck. 
Welcome back to the Popcorn Show. Did you know that the average American, that's you, eats about 68 quarts of popcorn a year? Wow, so think about it. There are four quarts in a gallon that comes out to like 20 some gallons of popcorn a year. That's insane. Anyway, so let me give you some more recipes that you can do with all of this delicious popcorn. So this is a nice, gentle invitation into kind of a mousse munch idea. It's a little less sticky than the typical mousse munch. It's a little less dark. Anyway, so let me teach you how to do it. So this is some freshly popped popcorn that we just made right here. And this is gonna be the syrup that candies the whole thing. I've already started melting a little bit of butter inside of the pot. So we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar to the melted butter. And then a little bit of kosher salt into that as well. And finally, some light corn syrup. All this sticky, gooey stuff. All right, so we're gonna just let that melt and mix for about five minutes until it really comes together and becomes a nice little honey looking drizzle. Set your oven at 250 degrees because it takes about an hour for everything to dry in the oven. That's basically what you're doing. You're not cooking, you're drying it out so that it gets really crispy, even in the humidity of South Florida. So you could mix this one or two ways. We could put this all into a big bowl, but since I already got a pot dirty, I think I'm just gonna go right back into this pot. So once that cooks for about five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and pour that right into the big pot. Let's switch this out. Try to get every last bit of it out. There we go and start mixing and do it as quickly as you can because it will want to stick together and clump up but if you're quick about it you'll be fine i'm using a rubber spatula that's fine you can also use a wooden spoon and you really just want to get that really evenly mixed in so i used my little tiny baby popcorn on this one but the one I made earlier has bigger popcorn. It's really up to you, whichever one you like to use more. All right, so once that's mixed in, go ahead and add whatever nuts you like. So this one has honey roasted peanuts and some honey roasted cashews, and then a pinch of baking soda right at the end. So mix all that in really well together. And then this lies down on two flat little cookie sheets. So that's that. So lay it out. No parchment paper because it will stick to the paper. Go ahead and cook this or bake it or dry it out at 250 degrees one hour. But don't walk away. You want to mix it every let's say 20 minutes with a rubber spatula a couple times over and then let it cool completely. And this is what you get, this gorgeous, crunchy, beautiful mix. Uh, and to that, you can add any kinds of things. You can cut up some Kit Kats, you can throw some M&Ms. I brought these little tiny chocolate chips. I love these, look how tiny they are. Uh, and we're gonna mix these into there. But of course, make sure that it is not added in until your mixture is completely cooled, okay? And then mix it together. And then it's kind of fun. You can give little ball jars of poppycock and you can call it, let's say this is called Mishi's poppycock um, as little gifts. And there you have it. So this delicious mix. So let's talk really quickly about kernels of popcorn. This is probably the smallest kernel you'll find. It's called an amber princess. And then obviously you have larger kernels of popcorn. Sometimes you'll find mixed colors of popcorn. Just find your favorite, make it for the family, come right back. I'll see you in a second. We gotta celebrate this popcorn day together.
Other than onions or bacon frying, I can't think of anything more nose tempting than popcorn. I hope you've enjoyed my popcorn recipes and that you'll try one to celebrate National Popcorn Day. Of course, all these recipes are always available online at SoFloTaste.com. Next week, I'm chilling with the food of winter. Hearty winter soups, winter veggies, and winter comfort foods all have their snuggly effect on us. Join me for a show that promises to warm you even here in SoFlo. Now let's look in on Martin Amado. Good morning, Martin. What have you got on SoFlo Home Project today? Hi, Michelle. You know what, I'm always inspired by young creative minds, and today I become the mentor to a very gifted teen. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, the tables are turned, and I become the assistant as Liz Mar becomes the lead designer, and I help her surprise her younger brother with a complete room makeover. Thanks, Martin. Looks like the teacher is becoming the student. So, Taste Buds, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week when I'm chilling with the foods of winter. Goodbye and good taste. Poptastic.